So if everyone gets settled, this is our next talk about city bikes. Please welcome our speaker. OK, uh, thank you all for, for coming. I'm Luis Esquerda. I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> and many years ago, uh, well, first a question, how, much people, how many people here know about the bike sharing systems? OK, that's huge. So many years ago, I had this problem that there was no Android app for the local bike sharing system in, in Barcelona. So when, while trying to, to create it, I found out that there was no open data available for me to build this app. So that's what I, when I learned scraping, which is uh, basically uh, some piece of code that connects to a website, extracts information, and you do something with, uh, with this data. Um, so when I, I, I got all this information available for me, I, I created OpenVising, which was an Android app for the local bike sharing system in Barcelona. And when that was already working, I, I found out that Barcelona was not the only city in the world with one of these bike sharing systems, and that many other cities all around the world had exactly the same problem, which is that there was no data available for developers to create apps or projects. So instead of creating more apps or more different cities, I created City Bikes, which is uh, a bike sharing network aggregator for as many cities as it can fit. Nowadays, uh, this thing that started in Barcelona, it currently supports more than 480 cities in all the world. And, and it's grown into this uh, by, by this Python library that uh, started the, the project. The good thing about this Python library is that people can contribute these spiders for, for their own cities. So let's say a developer from, from Italy wants to add support for some cities in, in Italy. He will just contribute to PyBikes, which is the core part of the, of the, of the project. And I don't have to do the work for him. Uh, I mean, I don't have to code this. Ad. He will do it. He adds supports for his own city, or maybe it breaks, and, and he, will, he will do it. So that's, uh, that's the cool thing about, about, uh, about the, whole, the whole project. Uh, when you have an open API, then people can start creating many things around it. And this is an example of many different applications that, that work uh, with city bikes. And, and then we, we get, to this, we get to, this, to this point where uh, nowadays we assume that data, open data or something, it's a reality. But this is the, the sad part of it. It's that more than half of it, of all the information contained in city bikes, it comes from scraping and then only 42 are, are, are licensed uh, so actual sources. And so you probably know about open data and, and the buzzword it is. Uh, many people, politicians, uh, city councils, they talk about open data. They think, they say open data, let's open things and, and so on. But Somehow, it doesn't relate with, with what's happening here. So the problem, and, and something I discovered, it's uh, the companies running these projects, they are not, um, they are not uh, opening up to, to, to developers. Um, and that's the, and that's the, the main issue with, with these guys. It's, it's that, uh, for instance, these are the, the ratings for, for an unofficial app for bike sharing, and they are terrible. And, and when, when, you, when you have the open API, uh, all these apps have great ratings compared to, to the main project. For instance, this is, the, this is the, a website of one of these bike sharing systems. And, and this, is the, this is the map that they have on the website, and it's not an actual map. It's an image of a map, and you can't even click on it. They did that because they want 
they want to avoid people uh, spidering this website. So what, what, are they, what are they actually thinking? I mean, it, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> so so that's, that's what some of these companies are, 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 are doing in order to avoid releasing this information. I think this information, I mean, it's public transport information. It, sh it should already belong to us, and we should be able to, to uh, participate in, in these projects. On, on the way that we that we like, and that's that's what city bikes it's been it's been trying to do. Uh, so I will show some examples of things. This is a, a map of all the cities that the project currently supports. So this is the whole view of of bike sharing as city bike sees it, and every splash or every so every green splash or every uh, red splash. It's somebody either taking a bicycle or leaving it. So let's look, for instance, Barcelona. And, and we can actually see people using the system and thinking, OK, this is, this is good. And this is not something that these companies even uh, were thinking about it. Or for instance, let's say uh, that we want to see the nearest stations uh, near the university here in Brussels. So we will look for, it will be Brussels. Oh. <laughs> I show probably, yeah. So it found the network, uh, sorry, the internet, it's a bit slow, I should have known that. but. We can now consult bike sharing system right on your terminal. And, and that's good. And that's something that this, the companies providing these service, this services will then, will then provide by themselves because they didn't even think that, that it's something that people would want. I mean, who would like to check bike sharing system on, on their terminals? Or some, some guy even created a, a Telegram bot. Uh, using the city bikes API, so let's look. And you ask the bot, okay, give me Brussels. He asks, well, I don't know, less than one kilometer, and he sends you where the stations where the stations are, and and how many empty slots, free slots, everything. So, so the point, the main point with with all of this, and and. And why it's important to me and why I'm developing this project. I mean, it's not about bikes anymore. It's about sh trying to, to show the companies, trying to show city councils all the benefits of releasing this information. So we, we hear a lot with open data. Uh, we hear things like, we are releasing information, but there are not enough people doing anything with all this information. And, and the main problem, it's not about the, the data they are releasing, it's the quality of it. And for me, this project shows that when you release quality data that it's useful to people, people are eager to participate, even in a public project that it's funded with public or private money. And, and that's, um, for me, that's, that's, the, that's the importance of, of, the, of the whole project, that these city councils uh, should learn that people really want to improve things not even if you are not hired to do it and so in, in in a sense this project the main purpose of this project in fact it's disappearing because uh so right now we have this this is a, like a middle part i'm extracting this information i'm putting it out there in clear but the, the, the best world or the future world that we would like is that city bikes it's not a necessary project. It will mean that all this information is already available for, for, for everyone. And at that point, when the project can finally be shut down, because the information is already out there, then I will think I, I will have uh, completed the, the task. Another cool or important part so what happens when you add a city to, to city bikes? It's that suddenly, uh, let's say there is a new system appearing in a city. When they get supported to the API, 
suddenly all the uh, unofficial applications that there are on the market, they work with the city. So even the city council, in, in, in some way, they wouldn't need to create uh, their own app, their own city app, usually. They can already use all the different many applications that are using it, and that's something really, really important, which is, in the end, it's uh, the user choice. So as a user of one of these systems, you should have the right to use whatever application you want to use. You shouldn't be forced to use only the official one. Uh, some would respect your privacy, some wouldn't, some would look nicer, or even you could develop your own because you don't like any of them. And having that choice, having that power, it's what it's all about. Thank you. I think we have plenty of time for questions. So uh, is there a set of APIs that you sort of support or uh, have developed that you can say with a new scheme, you can say ahead of time, go to the city and say, right, you're, whoever implements this needs, needs to implement this set of APIs? And also sort of leading on from that, uh, have, you even, have you thought about sort of perhaps even implementing open design systems for the, for the hardware that the, uh, that the schemes need to operate as well? I'm, I'm really sorry, can you, can you repeat the question? So, there was some noise. Uh, is it, do you have like a preferred set of APIs that new schemes should adopt, um, ideally, so that you don't have to do the scraping? Um, and have you, are there people sort of uh, implementing hardware um, for the actual bike sharing schemes themselves? To, to, uh, to adopt these APIs, so maybe an open design for the, that, that can actually publish the data. Yeah, so it, it can be answered in, in two ways. For instance, there is a, there is a system called, uh, I think it's called open, open Bike Sharing or something like that, and they are releasing um, some source code on, and some documentation on how to build these projects. And the other one will be about standardization or using the same format. And that's being done in some, by some companies in the US and, and in Canada. And they are trying to do something a bit similar to, to GTFS, well, uh, the Google Transport. Uh, so it's for bikes. And they started working on this like two years ago. And they found one problem, and it's that the city bikes API or the syntax that, uh, that my API has, it's already supported. So they release a specification and nobody uses it. But it was good for the project because now I, 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 I could add support. In fact, the person that added support is here in the room for this format. And suddenly all their systems are supported in city bikes and they are out there. So somehow, without even trying uh, the city bikes API syntax, has managed to be the, the standard or the de facto standard, which is, I think it's a cool way of doing a standard, just not trying to do it, just working on it and listening to, to the feedback and just keeping adding and adding fields. Uh, hello, Hi, I'm a bicycle mechanic and uh, it's a very exciting project, I've, the first I've seen of it. Uh, and I was wondering though, how, how uh, does the project uh, aim to get the bicycles fixed, uh, which is an ongoing problem with sharing bicycles, they always keep breaking. <laughs> so, what do you mean? So the question is, with, your, with the city bike project, how yeah. do the bicycles get fixed? Who fixes them and how does that happen? No, no, no. Uh, that's, uh, so the thing with all, all these bike sharing systems, they are like public private grant projects and they i mean i, I work com they completely ignore that this project exists so uh, they they work on another level so they usually have bands moving around they pick the bikes fix them and they have their own way of looking at the world but 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 city bikes the city bikes one uh, like oh okay it's just the idea <laughs> uh, hi um, here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. 
Um, yeah, I almost forgot my question. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you had said how many um, um, companies you scraped from, uh, a couple of licensed and others. I would be interested in, I have like several questions. What does others mean? Yeah. So you have like others. What others. do you do with the others? others. Next question. Okay. The licensed one, uh, do you pay for them? Do they pay you or uh, how does it work? So what is the license about? And the scraping. So uh, uh, who does that? Does like like for each city is a guy who updates the code, who gets the data of the website? And what, what, what did you actually do with the example you showed us that they only publish a picture so that you don't, uh, it's like makes it hard to get the data? Yeah. So and what, actually, for, especially from the unlicensed one, obviously, <laughs> um, with the unlicensed one, do they complain? Do they say, hey, don't do that? Or are they just silent, look away, or not even aware of it? OK, so the, the, the cool part about these questions is that somehow they are all connected, connected with each other. So it works. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the first one was about the licensing one. The, or, uh, so this uh, part of the slide that say others, right? Uh, others mean uh, private sources. So it's either a reverse engineered API or it's uh, some JSON feed that it's feeding their website. And it doesn't, because it doesn't have an, a license, it's not documented, it's not, I, so it really you don't know what are the terms of this. Uh, it's just out there. And the second question was about uh, if these companies are paying me or I'm paying for some, and no, they, they don't pay me and I don't pay them also, obviously. Um, sometimes you had to, to pay to access some of this information and when that happens, you just hook into their private API because they, they always have an official client. So you take, you take this official client, you uh, look at what sources they are, they are using, which websites, and you just uh, pretend to be their own client and access that information, and that works. Uh, the third was problems. So obviously, when you are using private APIs, you will have problems. And, but the cool thing about this project is that it puts them in a bad position. Somehow this project is doing the work that they are not doing. So they don't want to be the bad guys that will appear on a local newspaper, like big company shuts down, a nice guy that was trying to do a favor to, to the bike sharing users. So they, they just ignore it. I don't know, maybe some of them even ignored it completely, like they don't even know how it works or how that happens. I remember one day talking with uh, one guy that was working for one of these companies as a technician. And he told me, oh, wow, you are the guy that did this. How do you access this information? I told you, I mean, you should know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I think I forgot about the fourth question. Maybe, maybe you guys can talk afterwards because we're really out of time and there's the oh. next talk that's going to start in two minutes. Okay. Give him a big hand for the brilliant project. <laughs> <laughs>